Now, welcome to another episode of uh, Talking Cancer. Today, I'd like to introduce my colleague and associate, Dr. Thomas Durai, who will be discussing information on his recent study on a new and powerful protocol for managing uh, glioblastoma. Uh, we think this will eventually become the standard of care for how people with glioblastoma and possibly other major cancers will be treated. Uh, my, my name is uh, Tomas Durai. I am a, I'm a physician scientist, uh, currently working as a, as a postdoctoral research fellow here at the, at the Seafried lab. The question is, what is ketogenic therapy or ketogenic metabolic therapy or, or uh, the ketogenic diet, how, how this fits into, into the, the, the clinical applications? Um, I think one of the problems that we have here is that uh, within the field, um, these, this terminology is not very, very standardized. So, so you will you will see that you know ketogenic diets, for example, are applied across across different fields in in research and, and in a clinic. You you have them for type two diabetes, uh, type one diabetes. You have them for epilepsy, of course. That's the classical uh, classical application that they had. You have them for neuropsychiatric diseases, neuroprogressive diseases, uh, and of course for obesity, which is kind of the, the more um, common or, or known within the within the population, uh, people use ketogenic diets for, for weight loss uh, to, to manage uh, weight. And, and within each field, the uh, <clears throat> kind of the characteristics that, that you would find in, in the ketogenic diet are, are different. So when we're going to talk about ketogenic metabolic therapy uh, in, in cancer, this has a very specific uh, definition. And, and in, in the paper you will be able to see, I try to divide it into dietary ketogenic metabolic therapy and pharmacological ketogenic metabolic therapy. Uh, the, the dietary ketogenic metabolic therapy, uh, I define as a, as a sine qua non. Uh, this means as a, as a basic essential requirement uh, that you would need for, for the subsequent therapies that you would, you would posit for, for the management of cancer. So, and these two come together. So this is an interaction between a diet and drugs. Um, and so, so within ketogenic, within dietary ketogenic metabolic therapy, uh, you have different tools. And uh, this is another thing that we often get associated with, with ketogenic diets. And there is nothing particularly uh, special about the diet itself. What we uh, what we feel is, is meaningful is that the diet induces a, a metabolic state in the body uh, that basically mimics fasting. So the diet is a way to, to maintain fasting long term uh, without, you know, of course, extreme caloric restriction. Um, and I, I, I like the, the terminology that, for example, uh, for example uh, Dr. Dominic D'Agostino uses about the ketogenic diet. He calls it a prescription strength diet. So this is, this is a diet that has uh, a set of, of objective biological criteria that you, you are meaning to, to achieve. Uh, so it, you, not, not every ketogenic diet is, is the same, especially for, for cancer management. As I said, in different fields, uh, the, the, the diet itself might have different, different characteristics. Um, so, so within dietary ketogenic metabolic therapy, as I said, you, you have different tools. Uh, therapeutic ketogenic diet is one. Uh, of course, fasting is the, the most you know, effective, maximal way to, to mimic fasting, is water-only fasting. Uh, but in, in principle, you could also use drugs to, to try to achieve the same, same results. And this is um, one, one of the things that the field uh, and our, our fellow researchers at different research groups are trying to do is say, well, uh, the diet is so, so complicated and it's hard to to have people adhere that you would rather use drugs. Uh, some people have used metformin, for example. This is a mild gluconeogenesis inhibitor, uh, basically inhibits the, the production of glucose from, from the liver. And uh, this uh, puts, of course, re reduces glucose in, in, in the blood and, and puts some metabolic stress on, on the tumor cells. It's not, not that powerful, but it, it is a, a tool that can be used. SGLT2 inhibitors is, is another uh, way to reduce insulin and to reduce uh, glucose. These are drugs that um, inhibit the renal reabsorption of, of glucose. Uh, so basically, glucose is excreted in the urine. Uh, and other, other people have proposed, for example, uh, cancer dialysis. So this would be uh, trying to deplete uh, the, the glucose from, from the blood uh, with you know, an extra, extra corporeal uh, system. 
and then infuse ketone bodies. And unfortunately, uh, therapeutic ketosis or therapeutic ketogenic diets and, and fasting and caloric restriction are, are not, it's, it's not only the change in the glucose and, and the ketones. It is also, it, it, this, these are endogenous processes that change, you know, thousands of, of, of gene uh, expression profiles and, and metabolic pathways that cannot be, uh, you, you cannot kind of hack it using drugs, unfortunately. If, if, there, was a, if there was a way to, to just use a single drug or, or single intervention to, to achieve all the benefits that, that we, uh, we see from, from the data that, that ketogenic diets and, and fasting and, and uh, cyclical caloric restriction can have, uh, then of course it would be much easier to, to propose this. But uh, unfortunately, as I said, this is, this is an endogenous process that can only be uh, achieved uh, using, uh, using the therapeutic uh, ketosis. So, as I said, we have an, an umbrella term of uh, ketogenic metabolic therapy. Within this, we have dietary ketogenic metabolic therapy and pharmacological uh, ketogenic metabolic therapy. And within the dietary ketogenic metabolic therapy, we would have different tools. And one of those tools is a ketogenic diet. But as I said, there is, you know, there is other, there is the caloric restriction itself, there is fasting mimicking diets, um, there is a paleolithic ketogenic diet, a Mediterranean ketogenic diet. Uh, slightly more complicated to implement, but still possible. A plant-based ketogenic diet. Um, <clears throat> these could be used. Uh, all these could all be used cyclically to uh, to try to achieve this this mimicking of of the the fasting metabolism that is the ultimate goal, the the objective biological goal of of ketogenic metabolic therapy. So with the with the ketogenic diet itself, uh, the the objective that we are trying to achieve is to lower are blood glucose, so this is glycemia. Uh, so it's a stable, lower than baseline uh, level of, of glycemia. And of course, there's a, a demand-driven uh, proportional increase in, in ketonemia, in, in ketone body utilization by, by the body. And this is this, is this metabolic shift uh, towards using uh, fat-derived fuels uh, for, for energy production. So this is using, <clears throat> this is using fatty acids and ketone bodies uh, to, to supply uh, as a primary contribution to the energetic and the, the biosynthetic and you know the, all the TCA cycle metabolism uh, and oxidative phosphorylation of our body. We are trying to shift away from the use of glucose uh, as our primary fuel to increase the reliance upon these oxidative uh, fat-derived uh, metabolites, which are, as I said, fatty acids and, and ketone bodies. There's three ketone bodies. Uh, there is beta-hydroxybutyrate, acetoacetate, and acetone. Uh, beta-hydroxybutyrate is the is the primary uh, primary ketone body. So this is the shift we are with with therapeutic ketosis. We are trying to reduce our glycemia uh, and increase our ketonemia. This can be measured in the glucose ketone index, uh, the GKI. Uh, now, as as you can imagine, so the glucose ketone index is just a ratio between the glucose that you can measure in a, in a finger prick and a ketone uh, measurement, which is usually uh, beta hydroxybutyrate. Um, and so you just, made the you just make the ratio, uh, the, the division between these two, uh, and, and you get a, a value. We usually say a value under, under two, uh, GKI under two, is you know, going in the right direction. Um, and un under one or one or below, it would be the optimal level. Now, but you can imagine, for example, um, and th these need to be measured in the in the same um, unit of, of measurement. So glucose is usually in, in millimolar, and ketones are also in, in millimolar. You can have glucose also in milligrams per deciliter, and they, you would need to convert these to, to millimolar because uh, you will see that most of the uh, the measurement devices of, of ketones uh, express the, the measurement in, in millimolar. So, so let's say you have four millimolar of of glucose and two millimolar of, of ketones of, of BHB. This would give you, if you divide four between two, this would give you uh, a GKI of, of two. Uh, if you have 3.5 millimolar of, of glucose and 3.5 millimolar of, of ketones, uh, this would give you a GKI of one. Uh, but you could also have four millimolar or even five millimolar of, of glucose and five millimolar of ketones. And this would also give you a GKI of one. Uh, 
uh, even with a relatively normal or high uh, glucose, you know, the, the normal level of, of, of glucose would be around, um, you know, five millimolar uh, if you are not following a ketogenic diet. Uh, so this is just to say that the absolute uh, levels of glucose are also important and you would typically try to aim for uh, as, as low as possible levels of, of absolute levels of, of glycemia, of, of glucose. With the caveat, and I, I see a lot of, of patients being a little bit uh, confused about this and, and uh, putting, I, I would say, perhaps too much emphasis of, of trying to push the glucose as, as low as possible. Uh, you know, the, the glucose levels, of course, will be variable and, and different stressors can, can have an impact on, on these uh, lack of sleep. Exercise will increase glucose levels, and this is a good increase. Uh, of course, stress, uh, m many many things, uh, even excess protein can can affect the, the baseline glucose levels a little bit. Uh, but this does not mean that that you have to freak out and and try to reduce them as as much as you can. This is just you are trying to keep your GKI in general and the glucose levels and the ketone levels glucose as low as possible, ketone levels intermediate or high, depending on what what your requirements of of energy in the in the body are. Uh, to, to mimic chronically, to mimic this state of, of fasting metabolism. Uh, so, as I said, I, I think people often give give a lo lot of kind of emphasis on on, on the GKI, uh, but you should not try to hack it. For example, if you could even have a low GKI following a standard diet, if if you if you um, took some exogenous ketones, uh, then your your glucose would be still normal to high. And you could have elevated ketones, but this single measurement of, of GKI wouldn't mean that you you are in ketosis. Wouldn't mean. I mean, technically, you would have ketone bodies circulating in the in the body, uh, but this is not the the metabolic state that you are trying to achieve with uh, therapeutic ketosis, uh, therapeutic ketogenic diets, uh, or dietary ketogenic metabolic therapy. Uh, you are trying to to shift your your whole body into a more uh, kind of inhospitable environment for, for the tumor to grow. You are trying to reduce the resources and the nutrients that, that would be available for, for the tumor. And the GKI is simply a, a proxy indicator uh, that you are moving into the right direction. Of course, ideally, uh, we would be able to measure, you know, insulin signaling should be down, the growth signaling in, in general should be down, NTOR signaling should be down, AMPK should be upregulated, autophagy should be upregulated. Um, inflammation should be lower. All these things, ideally, we would be able to to measure. Some of these things can be measured in a single point, you know, blood analysis, um, uh, blood work. Uh, but what you are trying with the GKI is to to sample as often as possible. Uh, ideally, we would use uh, continuous glucose monitors or continuous ketone monitors, at least in the beginning, to to get an idea of what what the, what the people uh, what what the patient is doing in terms of their biological adherence. And, and this would be an indicator, as, as long as it's chronically reduced and moving in the right direction, this would be the, the indicator that you, you are, because these things are associated. So the GKI is a, is a proxy indicator for all these changes uh, that are beneficial to, to try to, uh, for sure, at least slow down uh, tumor, tumor progression and tumor growth.